capstone project. And first one was done in 2015. Uh, the author uh, was Tan uh, uh, and he just started uh, from the design of uh, this short intramedullary nail. Uh, next year we have uh, Wahak who designed the long intramedullary nail and uh, Gagik who did some uh, business stuff, uh, some preliminary uh, ways to commercialize the idea or the nail. And uh, now this current year, uh, Levon is engaged in the project uh, a little bit uh, from different uh, point of view. He conducts, he should conduct finite element analysis and uh, prepare the methodology for cadaveric foam testing. Uh, of course, uh, when we decided to uh, 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 manufacture, fabricate the uh, prototypes, then uh, we had to uh, redesign the, the models created by the students because they should uh, satisfy all the uh, production publication requirements. And uh, so this is done and uh, the drawings are prepared for, uh, to be publicated for publication. Uh, and uh, then uh, the, the important issue here is, uh, here is uh, uh, what the design should be for the publication, what the specific requirements should. And here at this point, uh, Ed uh, joined us, joined our team, and his experience, his expertise in this field helped us uh, very much, and I, I just, just I want to uh, uh, want him to continue this talk uh, with regard to this aspect, design for manufacture aspect. Great. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Aram. Thank you, for UA. Thank you, uh, Aram Sakis, for uh, bringing me on to this project. It's uh, very meaningful for me. Um, but I'll get right to it. So design for manufacture, right? There's, this is a very broad topic that you know, we could spend months and months discussing, but there are, there are a few key elements here that we need to address, right? So you heard that this device needs to be effective. That's the you know first and foremost, most important part of it. But as you also heard, the, these devices are extremely expensive. The surgeries are expensive, tools are expensive. It just takes a lot, you know, a lot of recovery time, a lot of time in the hospital, you know, this. Sorry, yes, this just, let, just let me know when I should uh, change uh, the slide. Okay, yep, thank you. So, um, you know, it's very important for this device and system to be as cost effective as possible. And cost comes from a number of different places, and there's one element of design for manufacturing. So I'll, I'll talk about a few of those elements here, and uh, those being materials, features of your components, and the manufacturing process that's required to fabricate these components. So the you know they look like separate items, but what you'll see in here is that they're really all interdependent. You know they, they drive um, elements of each other. They all they all drive costs. Uh, so. As as you heard, you know, there's a, you know, one of the industry leaders, Simpies, uh, they have a very complex system. And what we thought of was, you know, let's take a look at the design. Let's see where we can improve. Is there places where we can improve our, on cost, um, our simplicity? Um, so, you know, I really came into this project at the right, at the right time, time, there was a step developed, and now you need to be optimized for manufacturing. Technical drawings created. Um, so again, you know, trying to make an effective product but keep cost in mind. Uh, next slide, please. So the industry leader makes their effects at titanium, and you know, material alone is a little more expensive uh, than than others. Uh, so what we thought of is, hey, you know, maybe we can make this out of stainless steel. <laughs> It's not ideal, it's not optimal, but 
you know, we think it's it's a material that can still uh, allow us to have a an effective product product that's going to help a lot of people to make a difference. You know, although um, another element of this is you know we're trying to keep manufacturing bulk books for Armenia as bulk for as possible, and if, if we can't find these materials for manufacturing, well, you know we're we're not really meeting the goals we're trying to meet. So keeping in mind how we're getting these materials, the cost of these materials, um, you know, plays an impact to it. And you know, although we we were able to procure some titanium, well, we uh, any extra some prototypes, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, you know, we're we're trying to see we're trying to go down the path of perhaps developing the uh, device out of stainless steel. Now, next, what we'll look at is component features. You know, are there any that we can leave out? Anything we can simplify? You saw all the different tools in that animation. Now, are there any that we don't need? Can we can we implement the the value added features of those components into the rest of our system without needing additional parts and tools? You know, every additional tool is more money. The simpler we can keep this, the lower we'll keep our costs. From, from a device perspective, the lower we'll keep the cost of the hospital, but, you know, it's really all, all interconnected. So one one feature we identified on, on the Simpy's nail is a through hole that goes down the center of the implants. You know, it's a, it's a machining step that we are hoping to avoid. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a new feature, it's a long feature, and to machine this, you know, this part's machined on the lathe, you need an equally long and narrow tool. You know, that when you have a tool that's so small and long, it, 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 so narrow and long, it, it lends itself to premature tool wear, you know, deflection during machining, so you might not be able to achieve that, you know, that feature um, in its in its surface characteristics because of of the complexity of it. When you go through the steps of design, you also want to think about your, your tolerances. When you're dimensioning these parts, you know, these aren't perfect dimensions. You're not going to have a, a, a hundred millimeter long in place every single time, you need to allow for some flexibility in the machining process. So you have to think about what can I allow as my dimensional tolerances for, for machining? Is it plus or minus one millimeter? Is it plus or minus a quarter millimeter? Plus or minus 50 microns? And a lot of this is dependent on feature size. So we have this you know, 100 millimeter long nail you know, what's a reasonable what's a reasonable um, tolerance for its length? You know, probably plus or minus four millimeter is fine. We don't need to go as tight as plus or minus fifty microns. You know, the tighter your tolerances are, the longer it's going to take the machine. A lot more kick, a lot more uh, time and efforts going to need to go into creating your part to those tolerances. The more time. That is required, the more expensive your part becomes, because the longer it has to stay on the machine. So when you think, not yet. So when you go to, um, can you back up a little bit, please? Oh, let me go back. One more. Yes, yep. So you also have to think about the machining process required based on the features you have. Can you limit your your part to be machined on one piece of equipment? You saw these hand bolts, you know, those get milled. The nail gets turned on the lathe. The nail also has a bend to it. 
that gets applied after fabrication partway down the shaft. But you know, this is unavoidable. There's no way to make this on all eight. Uh, uh, sorry, apply the fen on all eight. So it, it's a separate process of applying. Um, you know, are there ways, you know, like like before, make the process quicker, the quieter tolerances, easier materials for machining or simpler features? You know, there's this isn't an exhaustive list. It's you know, a few features that uh, we identified as as you know able for us to simplify. So, um, can you go next slide, please. So, one of the things to think about that's you know not necessarily related to design for for manufacture, but it has is related to cost. And it's uh, setup time for your your CNC machines. You know, when you have, you know, depending on the lot sizes you're producing, you know, the so size of your lot is going to is going to uh, correlate to your part cost. So, you know, let's say you want to make one part. Uh, there's a lot of setup time involved to make sure the machine is up and running. Make sure you have the correct tools loaded. Make sure your you know, program is set up correctly to machine the part. So that first part is always the most expensive part. That comes off the machine. You no, know, that per, that first part may cost you a thousand dollars, but if you're going to make twenty parts, you know the total cost may come to only fifteen hundred after that first part is run. You know the machine can keep going on its own; doesn't need someone there to watch it. Um, so just you know think about that. Keep that in mind uh, when you know when designing parts, when looking for you always see that you know the Potential decrease in cost with a more number of parts you're going to uh, fabricate. So these next two items go hand in hand. There's a lot of creativity in design. We talk about the machining process, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really stop there. You have to think about inspection. Yeah, you can you can you can model parts with very complex features and dimensions, uh, but will your quality control team have a method to to verify this? You know, once parts on machines according to your spec by an outside machine shop. Um, you know, you need